announcement. Uh, I'm co-presenting with uh, Frank McGovern of IBM. I'm Kurt Thies with AccuTrack. I'd like to welcome everyone who is joining us online as well as our, our audience here uh, at the show. And let me begin by talking about the relationship that we have formed uh, between Iron Mountain and IBM. So this has been a partnership driven by our mutual customers and really demand in the marketplace to bring the two leaders in this records management and information space together. It's a multi-year strategy, so this is something that we are doing both in the, the near term to address customer needs and in the long term. So it's part of a joint strategic roadmap to address areas uh, mutually between electronic and physical records and extend the value proposition that we offer to our customers and help address the complexity in the marketplace. So this is an alliance that brings the relationships that we have with you, the customer, and our leadership positions and our experience in the marketplace together. So you're able to come to your trusted vendors, leverage uh, our investment in this space, and we're able to work with you collaboratively to solve your needs in this arena. Well, good day, everyone. Frank McGovern from IBM. I wish you were here. The weather outside is just spectacular. It's, uh, we're down here in Florida, and it's uh, about 85 degrees. We're at the AMA conference, and we're just having a great time. So Kurt, uh, Kurt told you about Iron Mountain. I want to take just a few seconds here to talk, talk to you about IBM. You know, there's a lot of similarities between I IBM and Iron Mountain. In fact, uh, one, of our, one of our marketeers uh, has often said that you take, uh, you take IBM and you take uh, Iron Mountain together. It's like combining chocolate and peanut butter and getting a Reese's peanut butter cup. It's the old adage, you know, one and one makes three. But some of the things we do at IBM that we're particularly proud of is certainly got uh, great customer uh, respect for, uh, for the things that we've done, good track record, very strong electronic records management products to, uh, to help our customers manage all that content that's out there. And uh, we do this on premise and uh, got a whole ecosystem of resources to, uh, to fully support the, uh, the solution. And to visualize the, the combination uh, that we have unified between the two companies, we start off with policy development and management. So this is developing your file plan and classification so that you can manage all of your physical records in the same manner that you manage your electronic records. And we'll show you actually in the program how we achieve that. And then of course, as we follow the life cycle of information, now that you've created your file plan structure, you want to manage your, your content as it's being created, as it's being collected, and as it's being managed. So taking all of the capabilities for your electronic records within the IBM uh, technology and content management platform, and linking that through Iron Mountain's AccuTrack for the physical file management. And we'll, we'll show how these, these two systems operate. And then, of course, flowing through the life cycle so that you have a permanent archive for your information that follows all the policies and procedures of your information. And, of course, you're familiar with how the, the physical boxes are stored at Iron Mountain and now the capabilities to store your inactive digital records in a digital archive uh, as well. And I'll let Frank talk to the, the life cycle that the information follows. Yeah, you know, when we talk about information, we talk about having it a life cycle or a lifespan. And it begins when the information is created, and there's a process around that. And that could be email messages, it could be Word documents, it could be paper documents, it could be uh, images, it could be just about any kind of doc, uh, uh, content that you think of. And throughout this process or lifespan, there's several things that will happen. Generally, early in the process, we'll declare it a record. And that means we'll associate it with a file plan. We'll lock it down so no changes can be made. So we'll be able to preserve it. So we can, we can attest to its authenticity, its reliability, and its trustworthiness. Further on in the uh, lifespan or life cycle of the record, there may come a time we do reviews or we do an audit. Or there's a trigger event that uh, will, will, will enable us to... Uh, uh, to execute a disposition process. And of course, when we dispose of our records, sometimes we transfer those. You know, if you're in the government, you frequently will transfer records to federal record centers or to the National Archives. 
And if you're not in the federal government, oftentimes you dispose of records, you destroy them, and you destroy them when they're eligible to be destroyed in accordance with your records retention policy. So this here was just a snapshot to, uh, to walk you through the various life events and activities that occur with a record over its life cycle or throughout its lifespan. So the next thing we'll highlight are the, uh, the ways that we are jointly solving customer problems. So we're, we're providing a unified interface looking at the use cases for both physical and electronic records to give you a single platform to manage your information in a compliant fashion. And we're also accelerating the time to value for customers by addressing the complexity, giving you a single solution that manages your information in a unified fashion. So in the marketplace, we've seen customers who are addressing these challenges, trying to essentially cobble together a solution and figure out how they can, they can automate their processes, they can apply their policies, they can gain control of their repositories and tie it all together, and it's been a very daunting task. So we have been listening to our customers and we have come together to form this unified solution. So let me take a minute to tell you about our IBM compliance platform. And it starts with a robust infrastructure. And on top of that is our enterprise content management platform. And then you'll notice we have what we characterize as on-ramps. And we have on-ramps to help our customers collect their content or archive their content. We have an on-ramp to help their customers classify the content, an on-ramp for records management, and an on-ramp for e-discovery. So oftentimes what happens is sometimes our customers will come at various on-ramps uh, to meet their compliance requirements. They might begin with records management, or they might begin with collection, or they might begin with e-discovery. But this in total, in whole, what we want to show you is all these parts work together in harmony to help you meet all of your different compliance requirements. So I want to talk to you about Infosphere Enterprise Records. That's the uh, IBM records management product. And we're going to talk, uh, spend a couple of minutes on this and walk you through. It is DOD certified. If you're not familiar with the DOD certification, it's a formal certification program by the government, and they actually look at a, a number of requirements and validate the records management product as meeting those, and if they do, they certify it. The, uh, we have a lot of out-of-the-box features with this, and you'll notice uh, we have out-of-the-box capabilities to support advanced classification. So what that means is Rather than put the burden on an end user and expect the end user to declare the content as a record, we already have an out-of-the-box capability using advanced classification to automatically do that without putting that burden on that end user. We leverage business process management. So out of the box, we have a number of workflows that are really focused on some of the key records management processes. And these workflows control these processes and we've built all that on top of our business process management capability. And there's some other things we do. Uh, let me just take a minute to call out one or two of them. We have a, a feature that we call dynamic holds. You know, many of us in the records business, we understand that due to litigation, or due to an audit, or due to discovery, or any number of other factors, you sometimes have to put your records on hold. You can do that manually. You can do that in, through an inheritance model. But we also have a feature to do that, what we call dynamically. In other words, we base it on conditions. So if the record has something in the content, something in the metadata, maybe the subject, something about you know, who sent the record, it doesn't make any difference. The conditions, if it meets those conditions, we can automatically place that content on hold. Again trying to take the burden off of the users and trying to make sure that we fully and automatically execute the records management policy. Also have full support for our content collection capabilities. You know, records exist everywhere. They exist in all kinds of different systems. They might exist in other enterprise content management systems. They might exist in a messaging system. They might exist in an imaging system. 
And so we have a capability to either collect those records, and you'll hear us talk about IBM Content Collector, or we also have a capability 